we are live. For those of you watching from the VODs, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another episode of Card Review. We're going to be here and we're going to be reviewing some of the new stuff here in Digimon TCG BT06. The whole set has been revealed, so there's a whole bunch of cards to look at. So let's go see what we have to look at, shall we? Card Review. So the whole set has been revealed, so we have a whole bunch of cards to look at here. But for this episode, we're going to be looking at a very, very spicy deck, uh, in my opinion, in all of BT06, which is the Three Musketeers. The Three Musketeers are based on three types of Digimon of three different types of colors, and they specialize in playing seven cost option cards. The first Three Musketeer card that we was revealed is Gundramon. 11,000 power, four cost to Digivolve normally, and has two abilities. Blocker, which is not relatively good on 11,000 power DP Digimon, but has the other ability of when Digivolving, reveal the top five cards of your deck. You may use one option card with a memory cost of seven from among them without paying its memory cost. Then you trash the remaining cards, and if you don't use an option card from that top five, you delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of four or less. Now, when we get to the option cards, we'll see just how good uh, this effect really is, but usually there's already some really good 7 cost option cards already, like Transcendent Sword, Kokaida's Breath, and we're gonna see some other control effects as well. It's gonna be really good. And that's why I will rate this card a solid 7 out of 10. And the reason why we rate it a 7 out of 10 is because it still has low on power, but the check in the top 5 for a memory cost of 7 option card is relatively good but it's still a gotcha roll and in a card game gotcha rolls aren't really the best uh, in terms of consistency wise and that's why we'll give it a seven next card the next musketeer we will look at is the magna kidmon so the magna kidmon uh similar to the gunjamon has two abilities and four costs to evolve normally and to keep in mind it is a red card so, if you were trying to mix it into a deck, you'll have to find some way to be able to digivolve into a red or black Digimon. So, its first ability is Security Attack plus 1, and its second ability is 1 Digivolving. You may use an option card with a memory cost of 7 from your hand directly without paying its memory cost. And if you did not use an option card, you can just delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 4000 DP or less. So, similar to the Gunjamon, where if you fail to play an option card from your hand, you at least get a backup effect of destroying a Digimon with only 4,000 DP or less, which is arguably worse than destroying a Digimon that's 4 cost or less. However, however, you do get the benefit of playing a memory option card straight directly from your hand. So if you do have the option cards from your hand, you can essentially use a very powerful controlling option card for a cost of 4, which is very cheap. Very, very good indeed. I will rate this card a solid 8 out of 10. It gives good pressure with the security attack plus 1. And when we get to the option cards uh, for the three musketeers, they give really good control options as well. So that's why I will give it an 8 out of 10. Next card. We move on to the last musketeer of this set, which actually turned out to be a secret rare of the set, which is the Biel Starmon. So... The Biel Starmon is a 3 cost Evo, cheaper than the rest of the Musketeers, and 11,000 power, but it is a purple Digimon now. So having a tricolor deck is going to be very interesting in the Digimon TCG, as it's not normally ever been done before. At least not uh, endorsed. You, you could always run a 3 color deck, but usually that wouldn't really work that well. <laughs> so, it has two abilities here. Its ability is, uh, when you want to play this card from your hand, you can reduce its play cost by one for each of the three Musketeers Digimon and option card with a memory cost of seven in your trash. So it's looking to be that even though it's tricolored, this looks to be a Digimon that you want to just hard cast normally. And thanks to the cards uh, like Gunjamon, you are more likely to fill up your trash with more Musketeer cards and more of the seven cost memory cards, and that will greatly reduce its play cost. So. If you have at least six of the six cards in total of Musketeer cards or the seven cost option cards, you'll be able to play this card for only six costs, which is relatively cheap uh, for getting an Mega straight up. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. If the second effect is on play, return one option card with a memory cost of seven from your trash to your hand. Then you may use one option card with a memory cost of seven from your hand without paying its cost. Now that is very good in that if you have already used your option cards ahead of time, so it's looking like the other Musketeers are your mid-game bosses, this card is what you go into if you need uh, an emergency way of controlling the board. 
So having an option like this is very good because you get to recycle the option cards you've just used or option cards you have trashed with cards like Gunjamon early on. So having the option to recycle the set option cards and then using it for free is relatively good. So imagine having uh, at least six of your Musketeer cards and or option uh, cards that cost seven in your trash. You'll be able to play this card for six cost and then play an option card for free. So basically getting a two for one. Very good indeed. I will grant this card. I honestly will give it a nine out of ten. When we see the rest of the support, you'll see exactly why I'll give it a 9 out of 10. But it is very good in that it allows you to bring out yourself a body on the board for relatively cheap. And play very strong option cards for free. Next card. We talked a lot about these 7 cost option cards. But let's go see what these 7 cost option cards really are. We'll start off with the black one. The black uh, 7 cost option card in the set is called Jualt Shwarma. Or as I like to call it, Gun Shawarma. <laughs> if you can't, if you're having trouble pronouncing it, just call it Gun Shawarma. <laughs> its first ability is, if you have a Digimon with three Musketeers in play, you may use this option card, ignoring its color requirements. So, what that means is, as you saw, all the three Musketeers are all different colors. And as you know, for option cards, you need to have a Digimon or a Tamer on the field or in your racing area that matches the color of the option card if you wanted to use it. But this allows you to get around that as long as you have a three musketeers in its type. And besides all of the uh, musketeers have the ability of playing the option card via effect anyway. So it doesn't really matter what the color of the option cards were in the first place. But this makes it so that if you wanted to just play this option card from your hand, you could without worrying about the color. Now, what's the second effect? The second effect is main, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of 7 or lower. That is a very, very strong control effect, where if your opponent decides to have a bunch of bodies on the board that are normally uh, level 5s and below, for a lot of swarming decks like purple, green, yellow, or even now red, thanks to the Just One build, this card in itself allows you to wipe out all those extra cards on the board, except for the level 6s, obviously, and that is relatively good, considering that with the Musketeers, you're able to play these option cards for free from your hand and or top five of your deck. So having that control option is pretty, pretty good. Second effect is not as good in my opinion, which is the security effect. Add this card to this owner's hand. I would rather prefer if it allowed it to uh, activate the main effect for you check it in security, but I guess destroying a lot of all of your opponent's seven costs or lower Digimon for free if you check in security is pretty broken. So that is probably why they made it so that when you check in security, you only add it to your hand and nothing else. In terms of ratings, I will give this card a solid 6, maybe a 7. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. <laughs> no pun intended with the cost 7 memory. And the reason why we give it a 7 out of 10 is because it has relatively good synergy in board control with the three Musketeers. However, its security effect is rather lackluster, and if you have it in hand normally, it can be a little bit clunky, as we know with 7 cost option cards. So, that is why we'll give it a 7. Next card! Our next 7 cost option card will go into the red one. Now this one is relatively better, in my opinion, but it's a lot more limited in terms of what you can kill with it. It has the same effect of, if you have a 3 Musketeers, you can play this card without worrying about color requirements. And its main effect is you delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP. Now, that can actually be relatively good if your opponent decides to not build a wide board. And then you can destroy multiple Digimon that have the same play cost. Sorry, same DP. If your opponent only has one Digimon, you'll be able to just kill it. Because that is the only Digimon with the lowest DP. And its security effect is that you can activate this card's main effect. That in itself is already good because you're having an option card that can control or disrupt the board that activates in security is pretty good in my opinion. And if you're going to be playing the three Musketeers deck, you are definitely going to be wanting to put more of these seven cost option cards in your deck to activate cards like Gunjamon from your top five. So having more of these seven cost option cards that work in security is pretty good. And that makes it so that running more option cards doesn't feel as bad. And that is why I will give this card a solid eight out of 10. Because it has the effect of working in security and it still disrupts the board. Not as well as Gun Shawarma, but it still disrupts it pretty well. 
and it can actually take out big threats. Next card. This is the last seven cost option card for the Musketeer deck called Fly Bullet. Exact same effect as always, where if you have a three Musketeers on the field, you don't have to worry about having the color requirements to play it from your hand. And the main effect is you delete one of your opponent's Digimon that's level six or lower. That is essentially a Terra Force for that is seven costs or below, because usually not many people will have a level seven on the board. So having a card that just kills one high value target of your choice is pretty good in my opinion in combination with the fact that the musketeers can play these option cards for free so you're going to be able to have your bodies on the board and getting some good disruption as well so it looks like the musketeers are going to have some very very good control options and it looks like a very spicy deck for me to play test in the future and it's also a security effect is you can activate this card's main effect for free and that in itself is very good because like i said it is essentially a terra force so with that in mind, I will give this card a hard rating of a 9 out of 10. And the reason why I'll give it a 9 out of 10 is because it kills almost everything on the board, uh, but only kills one thing. So, like I said, it's like a Terra Force, and you get to play it for free with the Musketeers, and you can also uh, play it for free if you check it in security. If it killed anything, I would give it a 10 out of 10. But it only kills level 6s six, level or below, so if your opponent has an Omnimon on the board, this card, unfortunately, does not target it. That's why I will give it a 9. Next card. So, you might be wondering, how in the world would you build this deck? You're going to be having three different types of colors. How in the world would you be going into it? Well, first of all, uh, this BL Starmon is a on-play effect, so you're most likely not going to be wanting to Digivolve into this normally, even though it has the option to. And you can see that the Magna Kinmon and the Gunjomon are both... Uh, red and black decks, respectively. Sorry, red and black cards, respectively. So we'll have to find ways to Digivolve into them. Well, in this set, they've also introduced two new cards here. The first is the Gigajamon, where it can Digivolve from a red or black. And it has the ability of, during your turn, this Digimon is also treated as red. And the inheritable effect of this Digimon gets 2000 DP during your opponent's turn. So you can see that there is some synergy with the Gunjamon there and uh, because it is a blocker. So the, during the opponent's turn, getting 2000 DP will make it a 13,000 uh, power blocker, which is actually relatively good. And having it being also treated as a red card allows you to Digivolve from this card into a Magna Kidmon if you so desired. And that is why we'll give this card a solid 7 out of 10. And the reason why we give it a solid 7 out of 10 is because its abilities itself are relatively lackluster on its own, but it does have its synergy with the three Musketeers respectively. And having it being 6 cost as well is relatively cheap for a level 5, so if you really had to hard play this card, you wouldn't feel too bad about it. Next card. So we first revealed the Gigajamon here that allows you to Digivolve into the Gunjamon or the Magna Kidmon. But they also revealed another card that helps support the deck, which is the Mega Jamon. The Mega Jamon can Digivolve from a red or black for three cost, just like the Giga Jamon. Six cost to play normally, just like the Giga Jamon. And it has two effects. First ability is this card is also treated as a black card. So that means you can also Digivolve this into the Gun Jamon if you so desired. And the second effect is during your turn, this Digimon gets 2000 DP. Now that in itself is actually relatively good because giving 2000 DP during your turn allows you to swing into your opponent's security without having to worry too much about dying to a high powerful card in security. Because on average, the highest amount of DP uh, you can expect from your opponent's security barring effects is around 12,000 power. If they had checking any level sevens, that would be obviously higher than 12,000 power, but that is considered relatively rare considering that level sevens are usually tech options to begin with. So this is actually relatively good for the black decks in general because it, black has a lot of cards that can guarantee you security attack plus one. And in combination with this power gain, you can use cards like Final Zubagon Punch. Relatively easier now. So you know I'll definitely be using this in my black four Greymon deck. So that is why we'll give this card a solid 9 out of 10. And the reason why we give it a 9 out of 10 is because it has a lot of synergy with all existing black cards. And it's relatively cheap and it works well with the Musketeers. And that is why we'll give it a 9 out of 10. Next card. Now the last support 
we'll be looking at for the Musketeers is the Deputy Mon, which is a level four champion, which is two costs to evolve normally and five costs to play, which is relatively high for champions, but we'll see what its effects are. Its first effect is on play, reveal the top four cards of your deck, add one card that is a three Musketeers in its type, and or one option card with a memory cost of seven from among them into your hand. Then you trash the remaining cards. That in itself is relatively good because we saw from the BL Starmon, you want to have seven cost option cards and or Musketeers in your trash. So hopping cards that lets you search for what your pieces and or fill up your Musketeers and or option cards in your trash is pretty good in my books. And its other effect is the really spicy one in my opinion, which is during your turn, this Digimon can Digivolve into any Digimon card that is a three Musketeers type from your hand for a memory cost of six, ignoring its Digivolution requirements. Now that is actually very good because we saw from the uh, Musketeers that you want to Digivolve into, they are both for cost to Digivolve into. And if we're going to be using the support cards, uh, the support ultimates that Digivolve into them, which is the Giga Jamon and the Mega Jamon, you would know that they are three costs that Digivolve into normally. So that would create a grand total of seven memory used just to Digivolve into those Megas. However, this allows you to warp Digivolve straight into those Megas, skipping ultimate phase for a cost of six. So what that means is that you're paying one less memory and you also require one less card in your hand. So this is definitely going to be a staple for the Three Musketeers deck for sure. And actually for its uh, turbo capabilities, I will grant this card a solid eight out of 10. It ha grants you a bit of searching capabilities and also allows you to warp Digivolve into said boss monsters to get some seven cost option cards spamming early on in the game. Very good in my books. The only thing that would make it give it a higher score is if it costs it a little bit cheaper. Having five cost to play normally is relatively expensive in my books. And having no inheritable effect also hurts a lot as well. But solid two main effects for sure. And that's why we'll give it an eight. Card review. That does it for another episode of Card Review. Hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know in the comments below if you guys are actually interested in building the Three Musketeers deck. Well, actually, uh, we might be trying to test it out a little bit on stream. If, we if you also want to check that out, you should go check out the stream channel, by the way. Join the Discord as well for seeing out what the stream schedule is like. And that is probably going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.